What's up guys, Jeff from XK Tech Reviews. Today we put a GTX 1070 in my AMD 9590 system. Let's see what happens. All right, before you go running down in the comments saying, why did you put a 1070 in your 9590? That's crazy bottlenecks. That's just stupid, right? Well, we're gonna see in a minute with the benchmarks, but the reason I did get this, not because I thought It'd be the greatest GPU ever with my 9590. I got it so I could pair it with the new Ryzen CPUs, or if that flops, an Intel CPU, as much as I hate to admit it. So that's why I got it. On to the cards. So my old card was a Zeus R9 290X Drex U2, four gigs of VRAM. I'll have the specs down in the description below if you wanna check them out of each of these cards. And it served me, the, uh, by the way, the 290X served me well for many years, but of course it's time for an upgrade. That four gigs of VRAM is really limiting me. So that's why I got this 1070 Strix OC edition. Now this one comes close to the 1080 in a lot of benchmarks. It's probably one of the best 1070s you can get in my opinion. That's just me. You can check the benchmarks online out for yourself, but yeah, Great card, RGB, LEDs on both sides. Great card, I love it. So, before I start these benchmarks, let me just kind of explain my methodology here. So, I ran like a two minute run in the games that did not have built in benchmarks with fraps. So, and I kept the same exact place in the game. Try to keep it, you know, the same science. So, that's what I did there. And the rest of the games, of course, is just your standard benchmark runs. And when I got my averages, so if I got like GTA 5, for example, it takes five scenes. I average those together to get one number. That's what you'll see in the graphs. So without further ado, let's go to the benchmarks. All right, so the benchmarks in some of the games, very surprised, very pleased. In others, not so much. So let's kind of, I'm gonna briefly go over each one. Start with Battlefront, we'll talk about it. Some very good numbers here. I mean, Battlefront scales really well in a lot of systems, so I'm not too surprised about these numbers, of course. Now, one thing to note here, of course in the 200% uh, resolution scale, you jump that basically like 4k simulated as far as I understand it. So you're getting a good jump there. The 290X course dropped way down because of that low VRAM. And so let's move on. Bioshock Infinite. We saw the minimums was crazy here. So we got two less FPS with the 1070 versus the 290X. That's we're really seeing that CPU limitation bottlenecking. So yeah, we're getting outpaced there. The rest of the numbers on here what could you expect? All right, Crisis 3, I ran it at very high text resolution, system spec very high, everything maxed out, and it's topic filtering 16x. And we saw it scale up, but still, the GTX 1070 still at 43 with the minimum. I would like to see that higher. I think it would be higher with, say, 6700K, something like that. That's what my take on that. Now, GTA 5, we got 77 on high. 93 with the 1070. 
which is good, what you expect, but take a look at the very high setting. That's with everything maxed out, advanced, advanced graphics on, sliders maxed out, 16X MSAA. We saw a minimum 20 with the 200X and a max 25 with the 1070. So that's where you're really seeing that limitation. I mean, you could stick, in my opinion, any graphic card, 1080, two 1080s, and you really wouldn't be able to get much more in the minimum department there. That's where the minimums really show you where your limits are. So yes, you get these crazy max FPS, but your overall smooth performance in your game, that's where you're gonna get hit hard. Trying to maintain that 60 FPS or even 30 FPS in GTA 5 at all times to keep that smooth performance. And so on to Rainbow Six Siege, we saw, this was maxed out, everything maxed out, TAA. We saw, in MSA 8X, we saw this really low drop in 10X, could just be anomaly, but that is, keep in mind, a lot of these, especially with Rainbow Six Siege, they give you a result on their screen, you have to average out the three scenes together and most of these built-in benchmarks but still, we're seeing some really low FPS there. But in MSIA 2X, 52 and 60 here, the differences. So really, that's an eight FPS difference in minimum. I think that's really where another of these CPU limitations shows up here. All right, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Overall, these are just averages. It looks good in DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, it scales up. One thing you notice here, DirectX 12 with the 1070 got better performance. Both cards actually got better performance, but significantly better here with the 1070 in DirectX 12. But keep in mind my, I didn't list them here, but the minimum FPSs for DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 for both of these cards was pretty low. We saw some as low as five to six FPS in some of these. So that's really where the CPU all, it's trying to keep up and it's falling behind with this GPU and rendering these scenes. I saw that a lot in the final rendering scene of the benchmark in Geothermal Valley where some of the elements, foliage, things like that pops in. So that's where you're kind of seeing that lag in the CPU calculations. So, and finally Witcher 3 is where we saw a lot of bottlenecking. We're only seeing nine FPS jump from the 290 to the 1070 here. So yeah, we're really seeing that limitation. This is at max settings. You'd really expect to see with any other modern processor, you'd expect to see a bigger jump here, especially here in the max FPS, 56 to 60. I mean, we're talking, we can't even break 60 FPS here. And granted, this is a pretty, uh, in, intensive title, but yeah, still some crazy bottlenecking here, in my opinion. Of course, this is not an in-depth review trying to definitively prove this bottlenecking theory, but yeah, that's what we get here. So in conclusion, should you go out and buy a 1070 and pop it in your 9590 or 8350 AMD system? No, I can't recommend that. But does that say you won't get a performance gain by getting it? Of course not, but will you get that maintain that 60 FPS performance throughout to get that smooth performance? No, not in every title. So yeah, that's where you're really gonna wanna upgrade your CPU to something more modern. That's my recommendation. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Drop a like for this Star Wars shirt. Drop a dislike if you thought putting a 1070 and AMD system was stupid. All right, that's it guys, we'll see you next time.